Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to get started with your first Building Blocks development project using Eclipse. This tutorial assumes that you've already installed and configured a Blackboard development server using a previous related tutorial. Today we're going to cover how to install an IDE, and for this tutorial we have chosen to use Eclipse, one of the popular IDEs available out there. It's open source and free. Uh, another one you may have heard of is called NetBeans. Then we're going to show you how to use the wizards in Eclipse to begin work on your first building blocks project. And finally, we're going to show you how to automate development of your project with the something called the starting block. This is going to make your development very quick and very easy. To get started, let's install Eclipse. The first step is to visit the URL shown on your screen and to download the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. On this page, you will see a number of different distributions of Eclipse. This one is best suited for Building Blocks developers as it contains tools not only for Java developers but also for web developers. This download is a zip file, so all you need to do to install Eclipse is unzip your download file. The next thing we're going to show you is how to use the Dynamic Web Project Wizard to begin work on your building block. And as part of this, we're going to show you how to add all the supporting libraries for development that ship with Blackboard to your project, compile the building block, and then deploy it in an automated way to your Blackboard development server. Now a little bit more about the starting block before we begin. You'll want to install this on your development server before you get started with your building blocks project. To do so, log in to edugarage.com, visit the downloads area, and click the developers tool tab. The download you'll receive contains not only the building block that you install to your development server, but also an ant script, which is going to automate the process programmatically that involves manually clicking through the system admin panel to the building blocks area, uploading the WAR file, and making it available to the users on the system. That AND script is going to automate that all for you. If you want to learn more about the starting block project, please visit the second URL on your screen. It is a presentation from a past developers conference which covers that and best practices for building blocks development in more detail. Now rather than walking you through a series of screenshots on what Eclipse look like and looks like and what to expect, I'm actually going to load Eclipse up and walk you through a development project. But first, you'll know that you have the starting block successfully installed when it shows up in the list on the building blocks management page. Now in the directory you've unzipped Eclipse into, just start Eclipse up by running the executable file the first time you load Eclipse, it will ask you to select a workspace. Think of this as my documents for your development projects. It's going to be where all your source code ends up. The default is usually OK, so it's safe to click OK and move on. The first time you load Eclipse, it's going to show you this welcome screen. If you've never used an IDE before, or are not familiar with Eclipse in general, it's helpful to view the overview and tutorial sections of this welcome screen to learn more even before you get started. But to dive straight into Building Blocks development, we're going to click File, New, Dynamic Web Project. A dynamic web project is a Java web application. And the only difference between a Java web application and a building block is a configuration file called the BB Manifest. So, to get started, we're just going to build off of this existing wizard that exists inside of Eclipse. I'm just going to give my project a name and select the minimal configuration for my project. Uh, we'll be developing a very simple example to get started. After clicking Next, we'll see that any source code that we add to this project will end up in the source directory. The default is OK, so click Next. And you'll see that any JSPs that we develop or supporting graphical files, so on and so forth, will end up in the web content directory. On this screen, I'll also check the Generate Web XML File Deployment Descriptor box and click Finish so Eclipse can build out a skeleton of my project for me. For those of you who have ever developed a portlet, so a JSR 168 or a 286 portlet, 
uh, or anything of that nature before, you'll see that this file structure is very similar to what you've seen before. Now associated with this tutorial, you will have seen a download for the BB Manifest XML file. Once you download that, you can paste it into the web-inf directory of your project. This is what makes a building block a building block. Let's open that file up and look at it in a little more depth. You can double click the tab at the top so that this XML file fills your screen and makes it easier to work with. You'll see that the plugin we're about to develop is called Example Plugin. It'll work with Blackboard 9 and above. And it's going to define a new system tool. So in the System Admin panel, we're going to get a new link to something called the Example Admin Tool after we develop our building block. This XML file is provided as a simple example to get started with. You can learn more about the BB Manifest file by looking at the Blackboard Development Guide. You'll also see that in our tool, our tool is going to point to a page called admin.jsp. Our next step in building the building block is going to be to add admin JSP to our project. I mentioned earlier that JSPs are going to end up under the web content directory. All you need to do to add this JSP is click right click web content, select new JSP file, and we'll call it admin.jsp and we can click finish. You'll see that the skeleton of the JSP is presented to you. I'm just going to add some text to this JSP so we can see what it looks like. Now you saw me mention uh, an ant script that ships with the starting block earlier today. It's also associated with this tutorial as a download. Download that file and we'll paste it into the build directory of our project. Those of you who are familiar with ant can look through this project to see how it works and modify it to your heart's desire. But if you're just starting out, all you need to know is the deploy clean available task will automatically populate this building block on your development server so you can see what it's doing. All you need to do is right click this task and run it as an ant build. You'll see that some text appears in the console below. Hopefully you have a successful build, and that means your building block is now installed on your development server. So let's go back to our server and verify that our building block has been installed. So let's go back to the installed tool screen, and we'll see that example plugin is now on the list, and it's made, been made available. Now remember I told you that we made an example admin tool building block. We can now see that our tool shows up in the list. Clicking the link takes you to the admin.jsp page which says hello world. The next step in our tutorial is to make a slight modification to that JSP and to add the supporting Blackboard libraries which really allow you to interact with all that good data that's stored inside of your Blackboard server and also to inherit the look and feel of the core Blackboard platform. To do that, we're going to right click the Hello World project, we're going to select Build Path and Configure Build Path. To our project, we're going to add external jars. The ones that you'll want to add to your project are the BBCMS admin jar. This enables you to take advantage of all the system integration APIs that ship with the product. The BB platform jar, which is going to allow you to interact with all the rest of the content and the courses and grades, etc. You're going to want to add the BB tag libs jar. This is what's going to allow you to inherit the look and feel of the product inside of your own. And you're going to want to get the Servlet API jar. I'm just going to select all of these really quickly and add them to our project. 
If you're curious, the directory that these will be stored in is your Blackboard installation directory slash apps slash Tomcat slash lib. Once you add those four jars supporting libraries to your project, just click OK. Now, if you were to use core Blackboard APIs in your project, you're going to be able to compile that project successfully. Now, also associated with this tutorial, you have received a sample admin JSP file. Let's go ahead and copy that and paste it over our existing admin.jsp file. And we will go ahead and overwrite that. Now what you'll see is that there are now these tags similar to the standard Java tag libraries, JSP tag libraries, that enable you to render a page with the look and feel of the core Blackboard platform. Just like automated code assist can be used by hitting control space, if you were to start typing a tag, for example, bbng colon, you can hit control space and get a list of all the tags associated with the Blackboard platform. You can learn more about those tags in the tag library guide available on edugarage.com. Now this page might look simple, but it's going to look cool on our Blackboard server. Now, you might be familiar with that process of logging into Blackboard and clicking to the System Admin tab and clicking the Building Blocks link and clicking the Installed Tools link and uploading your building block, browsing for it, selecting it, and going through that whole process of, of updating a building block. From Eclipse, we're just going to run that build script again. So let's open it back up. Right click deploy clean available and run that as an AMP build again. And what we'll see is that our building block has now been updated. Now let's click that link to example admin tool again. What we'll see is this page, which used to just be a simple single line of text that says hello world, is now a fully rendered page that very much so looks like the core Blackboard product. So with just these simple five lines of code, we have rendered a complete page which looks and feels like Blackboard. And that is how you develop a building block, start building it out, and automate your development with the tools that ship with Blackboard and with the starting block. If you are interested in how to manually deploy your project to your Blackboard server, all you need to do is click the project, click File, Export, Expand Web, and select War File. We're going to place this on our desktop for convenience. And we'll call it hello world.war. And we'll click finish. Now you can visit the system admin tab, the building blocks area, go to installed tools, and you can upload the hello world building block just as you would any other and it will install just fine. Hopefully this gives you a good overview of the process of getting started with development and being successful with your first building blocks project using Eclipse.